Welcome to the NTN Nightly. I'm Misha Charles. This edition's top stories. The President of the Republic of China, Taiwan, deems the partnership in public infrastructure undertakings here a foundation for sustainable development. The Chamber of Commerce gets a first-hand look at an innovative productivity tool. St. Lucians in the diaspora continue to demonstrate interest in their homeland. All that plus the latest in youth development, sports and the NTN Nouvelle Arqueon. President of the Republic of China, Taiwan, Her Excellency Tai Ing Wen, ended an official visit to St. Lucia on Friday, 19th July, 2019, as she closed off a tour of Caribbean allies. President Tai praised the relationship between St. Lucia and Taiwan as one of mutual benefit and development. On Thursday, 18 July, President Tai addressed St. Lucia's parliament in a special sitting. Speaking to the various projects St. Lucia and Taiwan have been engaged in, the Taiwan leader said public infrastructure is the foundation for sustainable development in any country. In addition to the St. Jude Hospital, we have also begun work on the international airport, as well as a national road system. These projects do more than build resilient infrastructures. They also create high quality jobs. That is also an important element of the SDGs. While project loans will come from Taiwanese banks, the work will be contracted to St. Lucia's companies through Taiwan's overseas engineering and construction company. This means we will be hiring local workers and using local materials. This model of cooperation ensures that both our peoples can participate and reap the benefits. There will be no issue of debt traps, unlike some other cooperation models. Meantime, President Tai has commended Prime Minister Honorable Alan Shastney for his persistence and dedication to rebuilding the St. Jude's Hospital. The Taiwan president says together, her government and St. Lucia are ensuring health and wellness for people of all ages. Ten years after the initial fire that destroyed the hospital, the government of St. Lucia and the government of Taiwan have promised the people of the South that their new hospital is on its way. The Minister for Health and Wellness, Senator Honorable Mary Isaac, expressed confidence in the government of the Republic of China, Taiwan, to bring the project to fruition. The St. Jude Hospital is not just a hospital in the south of the island that will serve the people, tourists, family, friends, and foreigners. It is not just another necessary project. It is not just a project that we have waited long and spent millions of scarce dollars to complete. No, it is not. It is a monument of faith. It is a monument of hope. It is a monument of charity to the people of St. Lucia. Faith is that the God we serve must have seen the catastrophic effects of the fire that was wheeled on a structure much in need of repair and replacement, and a people with little and insufficient funds to do so. Funding for the hospital includes 10 million US dollars, which was left over from an existing loan with Taiwan, and an additional 20 million US dollars, totaling 30 million US dollars. The Taiwanese president, Her Excellency Tai Ing Wen, has long hoped to support the reconstruction efforts. Since taking office, Prime Minister Chastanet has pushed hard for improvements to St. Jude Hospital. Through the combined efforts of both our governments and public-private partnership, we can finally begin to realize the dreams that the people of St. Lucia have looked forward to for such a long time. So I find it especially meaningful to be participating in the groundbreaking ceremony for St. Jude's Hospital's renovation. I am delighted to be able to witness this important moment alongside distinguished guests and the people of St. Lucia today. This redevelopment will not only improve healthcare quality for people in the southern part of St. Lucia, but also contribute toward the UN SDG of ensuring healthy lives and promoting well-being for all at all ages. Government has appointed the Overseas Engineering and Construction Corporation, the OECC, as the main contractor to build the new hospital. Prime Minister Honorable Alan Chastney 
says that given the OECC's track record, he is confident that the project will be delivered on time and within budget. The initial attempt at reconstruction had not, we regret to say, been successful. In fact, it has produced very disappointing results. But this town of Ufort needs and deserves a modern hospital to serve this southern part of the island. And this is what we are embarking on today. This project must be completed once and for all. The 90-bed facility will cater to both inpatient and outpatient services and will see the construction of a new wing to incorporate all the functions and services of the existing East and Surgical Wings. There will be integration through retrofitting of some existing buildings to achieve a fully functioning hospital which will match the services of a Level 4 hospital. With the assistance of the government of the Republic of China, Taiwan, the Grizzly constituency boasts a modern human resource development center. Anissi Antoine reports on the dedication ceremony held Thursday. The government of St. Lucia, with assistance from the government of Taiwan, have refurbished the Grizzly Human Resource Development Center. The freshly opened center is equipped with facilities such as an auditorium, a restaurant, a music studio, a conference room and office spaces. Parliamentary representative for the constituency of Grizzly, Honorable Leonard Montout, explained that the center can be used to enable a rebirth of creativity, which can be highlighted as an extension of the Grizzly Friday night experience. I envision inclusion as the showcasing of plays or musical performances become part of the social and cultural life of this constituency. Further, my ministry holds the responsibility to work towards endowing and fostering independence through training and the development of skills in the adult population. This is a responsibility that we take seriously, and I am pleased at the availability of the, the training room, which will facilitate more thorough and organized training experiences covering a wide range of areas of expertise. I view this center, therefore, as a catalyst for growth and development of Grozili and the neighboring communities. The Republic of China Taiwan has completed over 2,400 projects across St. Lucia via the Constituency Development Program. The President of the Republic of China Taiwan, Her Excellency Tai Ing Wen, during her state visit was a guest of honor at the opening ceremony. The President stated that the center will be essential in achieving tourism policy goals set by the government of St. Lucia. People will be able to take part in classes to learn crucial job skills. The center will also provide the community with a space for young people to come together and hone their artistic talents. So with the completion of one project, we are helping to bolster economic growth, revitalize local culture, and spur tourism. I can see that Grosla is a vibrant community, and the addition of this center will help to bring the community closer together and better showcase your cultural diversity. The opening ceremony took place on Thursday, July 18th, 2019. From the Government Information Service, I am Anisia Antoine reporting. The Chamber of Commerce got a first-hand look at an innovative product created by the National Competitiveness and Productivity Council designed to measure productivity within their business. Measuring productivity is critical to a business as it is a measure of the efficiency of a firm in utilizing its production inputs to provide a given level of output. More from Glenn Simon. Pro Tool, Measuring Productivity and Building Efficiency in Business was the title of a presentation made to the St. Lucia Chamber of Commerce by the National Competitiveness and Productivity Council during the Chamber's quarterly event called HR Connect. Executive Director of the NCPC, Fiona Hingson, explained that businesses are required to measure their performance, particularly their productivity. This is in an effort to sustain efficient operations, ensure proper allocation and time management, identify weak areas, provide timely feedback, 
track progress, which can lead to profitability of the business. The NCBC was very excited today to present to the Chamber of Commerce the membership about the Pro Tool. It is an interactive software that the NCBC has been working on. The Pro Tool basically helps firm measure the level of productivity, assess um, the qualitative aspects of the business in terms of business processes, innovation, leadership and management, and so on, and also give them right away recommendations on the areas that they can improve. The NCPC laments the insufficiency of data on business productivity in St. Lucia, attributed mainly to the inability of small and micro businesses to measure their level of productivity, which the Pro Tool is designed to capture. This tool will be able to measure not only productivity of labor, it can measure productivity of capital, productivity of raw materials, energy productivity, any type of input that the firm uses in the production, the tool will be able to give a specific measure of it. Executive Director of the St. Lucia Chamber of Commerce, Industry and Agriculture, Brian Luizzi, said the Chamber is keen on working with its members to improve the productivity of their workers and operations to ensure they remain competitive and profitable. We thought that the work of the NCPC in developing the Pro Tool needed um, to be um, shared with members and members should be given the opportunity to learn more about the Pro Tool and actually use it. So we think the Pro Tool gives members an opportunity to measure their performance, measure the level of productivity, identify gaps and identify um, opportunity for enhancement and improvement. And so we thought bringing members together for the presentation, explanation and exposition on the Pro Tool would be a very useful exercise. Chairman of the NCPC, Jared Bagas, noted that the presentation demonstrates very clearly that the NCPC is out there in the market seeking to improve the lot for businesses in St. Lucia and the nation as a whole. We don't compete only in St. Lucia, we compete globally. And if we are not trying to be more productive and getting more out of less, if we are not continually trying to do that, then we are actually moving backwards. The St. Lucia Chamber of Commerce plans to work closely with the NCPC to promote the use of the Pro Tool among its members and the wider business community. The presentation was held on July 10th at Coco Palm Hotel's conference room. For the National Competitiveness and Productivity Council, Glenn Simon reporting. And this is the NTN Nightly. Ryan O'Brien is up next. The problem starts with finding a suitable spot. It extends to double parking. Offloading zones are ignored, thus inconveniencing commercial activity. Handicapped spots are occupied by drivers who use the quick errand excuse. And of course, there's the constant fear of parking tickets. In an effort to curb these and other parking-related issues, the Castry City Council will be implementing short-term paid parking. $3 an hour can save you $500 in parking tickets. Short-term paid parking, coming soon. Welcome back. We join Ryan O'Brien for the latest happenings in youth development and sports. Thanks, Nisha. Welcome everyone to another update from the Ministry of Youth Development and Sports on the NTN Nightly News. I'm Ryan O'Brien. As the 2019 edition of the Winnet Island Schools Games approaches and destined for Dominica, the Director of Sports in the Ministry of Youth Development and Sports, Patrick Matra, says the schedule of disciplines to be contested will be similar to those competed in St. Lucia last year. As usual, we have not changed in terms of the sports that we have. We have volleyball, male and female, basketball, male and female, football, um, and of course track and field. So those are the components, those are the aspects of the games. I'm sorry about also netball. Um, and, and basically St. Lucia for the last few years have won the netball component and we expect more of the same. Um, our, our greatest worry has been with the male basketball. They seem to be very inconsistent. But as per the coaches and what they have done, it seems that we're more prepared and we would see St. Lucia coming, not at, in the seller position, but somewhere up, hopefully first. Um, but we, we feel a bit more confident this year for our team because of the preparation. And the good thing about it is that we have retained a lot of the team from last year. So almost 50% of the team is still there. And so they have had the experience. They know what to, ex what to expect. And as you would know, that Dominica is always a hard task because they come for St. Lucia specifically. But this time around, I think we are ready. 
Director of Sports in the Ministry of Youth Development and Sports, Patrick Matrain. He added that one of the good things going for St. Lucia this year is the fact that half of the team members from last year would have been retained for this year's games. Secretary General of the Caribbean Community, CARICOM, Erwin Narok, has hinted there can be other sporting events other than the CARICOM 10K that can be staged around the annual Heads of Government meeting. He made the comments following this year's CARICOM 10K held here in St. Lucia. We've had walks for, for the heads. Um, it doesn't get any publicity, but we've had, um, we had a walk in Antigua and Barbuda, we had a walk in Suriname, we had a walk in St. Kitts and Nevis, and, and the heads participated fully. So we just have to put it into the planning and, and try and get it done and so on. But, but yes, it's something that is always, uh, we spoke about it, um, but it's something that's always on our, our program to get done. CARICOM Secretary General, Erwin Larock. And in that item, we have come to the end of your segment from Youth Development and Sports for today. I'm Ryan O'Brien. Thanks, Ryan. St. Lucians in the diaspora continue to demonstrate interest in the socio-economic development of their homeland. Here's Chanel Norville with the latest example. St. Lucia National and Registered Nurse Virginia Wolf and husband Lloyd Wolf extended their generosity to the Castries East Elderly Home Care Program. The couple recently made a donation of equipment and other items. Virginia Wolf explained the initiative. I started to work on the project um, of assisting the elderly and bringing, getting blood pressure machines and um, glucometers, adult diapers and chucks on the pads, nightgowns and anything medical that would help our elderly. And um, I also help sponsor um, four kids at the 70 Adventist Ca Academy. Two of them graduated and one of them was the valedictorian. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm very grateful for the opportunity to be able to do it. St. Lucia Social Development Fund, SSDF's representative attached to the Home Health Elderly Care Program, Anselma Cauldron, thanked the individuals for their generosity. Occasionally, we tap into the assistance of individuals who could assist us in making the program even better. Because if left to SSDF alone, there is so much that could be accomplished that wouldn't. So we want to thank individuals um, like those we'll be introducing to you in a little bit, who were able to take time off their busy schedule, who were able to sacrifice some of their finances to be with us to ensure that the program is, um, is able to benefit and expand. Ambassador for Diaspora Affairs, Dr. Joycelyn Clark Fletcher, through her support behind the initiative. And this is what we're trying, the message we're sending out here to our diaspora, that you are important, you are valuable, you matter to St. Lucia. This is why the government of St. Lucia have decided to implement what has been on the back burner for a number of years. All of them are interested in it, but it has now been implemented. And we are reaching out to the diaspora saying, look, the government of St. Lucia appreciates you. You can give back with your skills. You can give back with your talents. You can give back with your finances. You can invest in St. Lucia for your business. You can do trade. We are now willing to partner with you, to work with you, to make it happen. In you. Minister in the Ministry of Tourism, Information and Broadcasting, Culture and Creative Industries, with responsibility for Culture and Creative Industries, Honorable Fortuna Bell Rose, indicated how such an initiative can benefit the people of St. Lucia. The Care for the Elderly is a program that our government, even this year, have expanded because you recognize that there's so much need on the ground in communities but we will never be able to meet all the needs and so contributions like yours you know um, solutions in the diaspora like you um, are free to continue to contribute oh, and we really much appreciate um, the assistance that you've given it is making a difference and you talked about visiting the people on the ground and actually yeah. getting involved in them, actually getting the medical attention. That's, right. That's the kind of thing we want. So you still, you are connected. You, you live abroad, but you're able to come back home and contribute um, in a significant way. And I think we're quite happy and we want to continue to encourage you um, to give that support. The couple pledged their continued support to the people of St. Lucia. For the Government Information Service, I am Janelle Norville. And stay with the NTN Nightly. Up next, Primus Hutchinson is here 
with the Antia Nouvelle Arqueo. La main propre c'est chemin bon santé. Il est absolument nécessaire pour laver la main si vous voulez tienne bon santé. Quand même si vous n'avez pas de glossiten, vous avez fait ces bagages là. Écoutez. Laver la main souvent et puis l'eau net avec savon après condition qui a 6 mètres 20 minutes. Par exemple, vous pouvez pour laver la main après vous changer d'ailleurs pas. C'est vite pour vite. Vous pouvez les gens qui sont blessés et bien malades. Après vous pouvez les animaux et après vous entendre les ordres. Et si vous n'avez pas vous avez servi sa yo kakouye hand sanitizer et bien alcohol pour 30 secondes. Lavez les mains souvent. Ça c'est une manière pour empêcher la maladie. Si vous voulez plus d'informations, priez bureau information santé à numéro 468 6349. Welcome back. We join Primus Hutchinson for the NTN Nouvelle Arquion. Monsieur Tanisha, Monsieur et Madame Département, qui est une responsabilité pour l'information au gouvernement de la CGIS, à ce moment Télévision Nationale pays à NTN, qui a présenté Nouvelle Arquion, le président Primus Hutchinson. Durant une grande cérémonie pour marcher placement pour construction de l'hôpital Neuf, eh bien, oui, construction de l'hôpital Neuf, Saint-Jude, en vieux fort. Le ministre qui est responsable de le développement économique, Honorable Guy Joseph, parle de la qualité de l'écassé qui a affecté la quantité de temps pour commencer le projet de l'hôpital Saint-Jude. Selon Honorable Joseph, en parmi ces raisons qui l'occasionnent pour le projet de l'hôpital, c'est la quantité longtemps. C'est parce que, euh, malgré l'établissement, il a gardé bien, mais il y a plusieurs situations qui était mérité à um, adresser. Honorable Joseph, tu es délivré à Dwayne Salah, mercredi passé, tu es en visitation au président de la République Chine de ta, pays Taïwan, qui te visite cette ci Mme Tsai Ling Wen. Ministre Joseph dit que pendant qu'il a regretté ces problèmes qui étaient existé en construction de l'hôpital saint jude il déclarait que le gouvernement a tenu pour considérer sérieusement ces conditions qui étaient déjà faites par l'autre gouvernement étranger qui s'est amis du gouvernement cette ci ah, bah, mais ces commitements, ça, c'était yon de 20 millions de dollars, mais c'est le gouvernement de la République pays Chine de Taïwan pour aider le finissement de la construction de l'hôpital saint jude C'est pour raison ça, on est Joseph dit, le gouvernement prend une décision pour rebâtir l'hôpital à la façon dont il y a un opéré à des qui était battu pour opérer. Le ministre a déclaré que l'hôpital Saint-Jude a une capacité pour faciliter 90 couches pour pouvoir être pour les gens qui ont été brisés traitement à l'hôpital là même, et bien qui ont été visités pour trouver un traitement. Le ministre pour le développement économique là, a annoncé que la construction de l'hôpital a fini complètement et qu'il a eu toutes ces facilités qui sont nécessaires. Alors, on a dit que très haut et le travail là a fait par le business de construction de Taïwan. À ce moment-là, il y a cette ci même. Nous avons Joseph, oui, merci, Président Saï, autant pour qu'il place confiance au gouvernement et le pays en gouvernement de cette ci et qu'il y ait un projet pour rebâtir l'hôpital Saint-Jude qui est fini complètement, allez, et qu'il y ait un travail qui a commencé, ça a continué juste en finissement pour ça là, qui peut finir dans une année et plus. En parlant de ça, le président de la République de Chine de Taïwan, Tsai, Wing, Tsai Ling Weng, en adresse li, complimenté le gouvernement de cette ci pour effort et la théorie en reconstruction de l'hôpital Saint-Jude. Madame le président Tsai félicite cette ci pour dégouer l'initiative de coopération entre les pays. Le président de Taïwan a renforcé le commitment pour continuer à supporter cette ci particulièrement en ces divers projets en tant que placés et principalement en oui, bâtissement l'hôpital Saint-Jude. Le président Saï dit qu'il a créé l'hôpital là qui a joué un rôle très important, pas seulement pour adresser les affaires de santé, mais qui a aussi opéré dans un degré qui est sustainable pour procurer l'assistance de santé pour les jeunes et les plus grands en face à ce pays. Le président Saï a déclaré qu'il a créé pour que ça a encore moins forcé la collaboration entre Taïwan et cette ci et qu'il a suivi le principe pour entretenir. Démocratie, liberté et sustainability. Premier ministre de l'Ici, Honorable Alan Chastney, en adresse-lui devant la cérémonie, oui, merci, gouvernement Taïwan, 
pour des gros supports et assistance que yo ka bay pour projet de reconstruction l'hôpital Saint Jude. Depuis après di fait a dévalisé l'hôpital ça là presque 10 ans qui passé premier chasse aussi oui monsieur gouvernement Taiwan pour des gros assistance technical par les officiers médicaux pour docteur nos et l'autre officier santé ça que si. Premier ministre chasse oui ma que l'hôpital là fini L'hôpital a fini complètement à ces mois en l'année prochaine. Ça a été effacé qualité de trois et c'est la peine qui est en cause de l'hôpital Sala tenu pour opérer à un stadium de sport. Et moi, je suis pour tuer assistance de santé, comme il était payé, mais il a empêché le programme de sport continuer. Premier ministre, je remercie autant tous ces docteurs, nos secteurs, qui travaillent, qui opèrent en bas tous ces trois casements Sala. Et pour presque dix ans, je remercie pour la patience et le commitment de moi. Tout cela n'est pas là. Ministre de Santé, on a Mary Isaac, qui a aussi adressé ce cérémonie. Après ça, le Premier ministre Chasse, le Président Saï, et le ministre pour le Développement économique, on a Guy Joseph, qui a marché placement pour commencer le travail de reconstruction de l'hôpital Saint-Jean. Et c'est comme ça que nous avons votre nouvelle, messieurs, mesdames. Je vous remercie autant pour regarder. Je vous remercie pour l'invitation. Je vous remercie encore. Si vous avez recevoir la ville, vous avez recevoir l'autre nouvelle à Coyol. Après ça, avant de me souhaiter une bonne fin de semaine et que vous vous êtes au Nisha. Merci au Pearl Primus. Et here's a look at what's happening to us weather-wise. Weak and stable conditions in the wake of a tropical wave will continue to cause a few showers over the Lesser Antilles Friday afternoon. Saharan dust trailing this wave is expected to reduce the visibility and shower activity around the Eastern Caribbean region for the next couple of days. Three tropical waves located over the central and eastern tropical Atlantic are moving westward near 15 miles per hour or 24 kilometers per hour. Tropical cyclone formation is not expected over the tropical Atlantic during the next five days. The seas are moderate with waves 4 to 6 feet or 1.2 to 1.8 meters. The sun will rise Saturday at 5.44 a.m. And that brings us to the end of the NTN Nightly. Join us next time at 7 p.m. with a repeat at 7 a.m. You can also catch up with us anytime on the St. Lucia Government Facebook page or YouTube channel. I'm Nisha Charles.